Welcome to another episode of The Read Pile. This is Free Comic Book Day 2023 edition. I've got eight books here. There's one more that I read digitally and one more that my wife has that I have not read. Um, I went to two comic book shops on Free Comic Book Day, which as of this recording was last Saturday. I don't know when this video is going up. I think there's a couple that are already scheduled. But uh, the first shop had a limit of five free comics. The second book had a limit of three, so I got uh, I got eight, except this. There's some controversy around this, right? At least according to Bleeding Cool. Um, it's not labeled as Free Comic Book Day. It is free. But I actually grabbed this the Wednesday before Free Comic Book Day, and uh, I guess that's somehow controversial. People wanted it. They couldn't get it. Look, I don't know. I got a copy. I read it. It's fine. <laughs> Largely, it's fine. It's, um, it reads... I got very half-hour sitcom vibes from this. It's a nice, I think, reminder of what's happening with the world where these characters were left after the previous games. But, uh... It's also just weird and convenient, some of the events that happen here. So it's it's ultimately fine. Everyone has a personal problem and an interpersonal problem, and by the end of it, everything's wrapped up, and people apologize, and they understand each other's stances, and it's just... Uh, it's... It's fine. I kind of expected more from Christos Gage. I've liked plenty of his stuff in the past. Uh, the art... He's fine. Character designs match the uh, the models. There are plenty of editor notes, which I will call out because they are helpful and good, and I want more of them. But uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 just fine. It's not great. It's just fine. So I guess if you can get a copy, get one. Some of this stuff has been made free has been made available for free digitally and I read one more that way and there's a couple that I'm waiting for that I haven't seen available yet but um, let me talk about that real quick so I also read the Star Wars Avatar um, I guess free issue yesterday and the the Star Wars portion of that book is frankly a mess the art is pretty good on a per panel basis but not as a sequential storytelling basis I, I've talked about this briefly before some it's two different things right you can have a good artist that doesn't know how to visually tell a story there's weird jumps between panels and you're like what is happening here and the story is also not that great I don't know if it's clipped from something larger it's just there's some Jedi and there's some kids and there's somebody killing people and some jumpsuits and like, look, it, the thing's a mess. The back half of the book, however, the Avatar story is just a fun short with Aang and Toph and crew and it's just well done. I do have five of the Avatar Dark Horse oversized hardcovers that have never been opened and uh, my wife and I really enjoyed Ang mm, Cora is a story, but um, I'll be getting to those at some point for sure. It's just, I don't know when. They're kind of daunting just sitting there. But um, yeah, that one, the Star Wars Avatar, is a 50% good book. Next up, we've got Fish Flies. This is the new Lemire book. I've been hearing about this for at least a year through his Substack. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I didn't realize it was a six-issue series. That was, um, I guess, news to me as of the most recent issue of previews. But this is weird. And I'm into it. I'm liking it. somehow unfamiliar with Lemire's own art style. There is... 
I think something weird happening in this town. I don't think this many fish, fish flies in one parking lot is normal. Although, this whole thing is news to me. We tend to have cicadas in the Midwest, not fish flies. I think that's an East Coast thing. But, uh, like, what's going on with this? Is this a different time period than the other stuff? And then there's a different possible storyline here at the end with another snippet of color. I don't know. I'm into it. I don't... I, I guess I additionally don't know if this is additional material or if this will be reprinted in, presumably, issue one. I don't know. But uh, this... I'm thankful. I'm geared up for it. I'm hyped. I want the series. Conan. Conan. I grabbed this. Um, I do like Jim Zub. I tend to like Jim Zub. And uh, new Conan, because of rights and public domain and things, Conan is a bit in flux. So I, I grabbed this, I threw it into my stack, I opened it, and the art is a little bit retro. I wouldn't exactly call this a modern style. So I was a bit reluctant to read this, even after I brought it home. I've talked previously about some of my problems reading even 80s, well, 90s comics, really. Uh, but I've, I've talked about my hesitation in revisiting or reading new some 80s 90s comics just because of the art style the writing style it uh, clashes with me personally so i was hesitant even after i grabbed this and then i did and it's thoroughly enjoyable i don't know if this is an adaptation of something or if this is new conan stories from scratch i mm, this is more of an origin story. This one in particular is more of an origin story. So I guess we'll see what happens with uh, with this going forward. But I'm in so far. What I found kind of funny is the credits are almost the Treehouse of Horror kind of... I don't know. That's fun. It also kind of it's weird it's a little bit weird but fun i'll take it i grabbed animal castle forgetting animal castle is an adaptation of animal farm so i started reading this i did read animal farm well i listened to the audio audiobook last year so i'm familiar with the story i mean even just pop culturally it's uh, been osmosed in my head over my lifetime the story of Animal Farm, but I did listen to the audiobook last year. I don't think I need a comic-based adaptation of that, but the art is incredible. And if you are somehow unfamiliar with the story of Animal Farm, then go ahead and check this out if you're interested. I want to check out this artist, see what else they've done, because uh, I can draw the hell out of some animals. Anyway, I, I didn't actually read this. I started to, and then I stopped, but the art's gorgeous. So next up, I read the Uncanny Avengers, which um, really I grabbed this so that I could get the preview for Hickman's stuff here at the back. Um, and there's not much to it. It's... Uh, it's Doctor Strange handing over a book and talking to somebody. This Peter Quill looking guy. And that's it. Uh, as far as the rest of this, the Uncanny Avengers and the, I guess, Avengers focused stuff, both of which written by Dugan, it's. I don't ultimately care. But, um. I don't know. This reinforces that the that I was right to bow out of X-Men once Hickman left. That's what this is telling me. 
So, I don't know. This is kind of a wasted pick. I could have done something else, but mm, hindsight, right? I also did my once annual check-in with Spider-Man via Free Comic Book Day, and this also reinforces that the modern era of Spider-Man is not for me. There's a nice craven here, though. That's cool. But I otherwise did not enjoy Spider-Man, and I this Venom story boggles my mind. Like, what the hell are they thinking? There is something useful, though. I'm curious about the return. Well, this. I'm curious about the return of the Ultimate Universe, like whether or not that's going to be any good. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to grab the first issue or not. I think it will probably boil down to the size of my poll list the week that that comes out. If it's low, then I might throw that into the stack and if it's high then I'm not going to but thus far there's been nothing that has enticed me to to grab it to, to add ultimate invasion to my pull list this was a welcome surprise so it had been in the news and seen some he headlines uh, Daniel Day Kim was promoting it and I grabbed it I guess what I hadn't realized because I'd certainly heard of it, but I hadn't realized that the complete series had already come out, because there's a trade coming out. By the time you see this, it should already be out, but there's a collection coming out for Mac Cadets coming next week, and uh, this is an interesting story. The art is, I think, a little bit loose. It could be sharper, but the art's good. There's a story of kids and robots. It's got... Um, kind of episode one feel of Netflix Voltron but I also like it I generally like Greg Pak so I haven't made any decisions but I would of the stack this is a, a recommendation to check it out this is a good start and lastly, the one I was looking forward to the most is Umbrella Academy and Witcher. But uh, Umbrella Academy, I am subscribed to the Fabio Moon substack. Where, and um, in one of the recent weeks, he said that this is the only thing that either of them are putting out this year as far as uh, professionally published comics. He did say that, they're, um, that they have done and are doing some cover stuff, but this is the only comics that they are putting out this year. And uh, I, I like the Umbrella Academy. I am big fans of Gabriel Ba and Fabio Moon, and this is as strange as ever, but I'm into it. I want to pick up Sparrow Academy. Um, again, through Substack, it sounds like Gerard Way is... He's writing the scripts... I don't remember the status of whether or not any are complete, but anyway, it's being written. It will be drawn by the Brazilian twins, presumably. Bah, but uh, I'll be there for it. Looking forward to it. There's also a quick short Witcher, Frog Kiss, and this is the Witcher writer. I see a listed here somewhere. Is there credits? This is the same writer as the Ballad of Two Wolves that just concluded that I thoroughly enjoyed, and I don't see a credits page. And the art is also great. It's a different artist, but this great this uh, this art I think is also quite good. So I thoroughly enjoyed The Witcher. I think it's one of the best free comic book stories I read. But that is everything that I grabbed, except for the Star Wars book and the manga thing that I also mentioned, digital and uh, the manga that I didn't read. But uh, this is everything that I grabbed, and I would like to get Red Sonia. I'd like to try that as well. It's just limits at the two shop. Uh, I don't even. I don't remember seeing Red Sonia at the second shop. It was only there at the first. Anyway. This is what I grabbed. It's, um... I like Free Comic Book Day as a way to try out a bunch of stuff. 
I like preview pages. I talk about this on a regular basis. I think every book in the modern era should put out preview pages just so that potential readers can get a glimpse at, I mean, it's like a trailer. You don't need to do an actual video trailer that uh, some comics weirdly do. You just need to put out the first couple of pages and be like, here, if you want to taste, here it is. Maybe at the start of every new arc for every book, I'm saying, as an industry, <laughs> Do more previews. For God's sakes, do more previews. Anyway, this is everything that I grabbed. It's a pretty mixed bag, but I did find some gems, and for that, I'm always thankful. But uh, it, I don't know how else to conclude this, except it was a good pre comic day. I did spend money at both of the shops I visited, so it wasn't like I'm just mooching off of free comics. I did grab Ninja Turtles... Power Rangers, the three issues that I didn't yet have, and I grabbed the complete Stillwater Trades. So, like I said, money at both shops. But now I'm rather long-winded. I'm going to just stop here. So, thank you for watching. <laughs>